Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank the Siemens Foundation and Discovery Education for putting on such a great competition and George Washington University for hosting. I've enjoyed it very much. I love Washington, D.C., and I'm glad to be here. This research I'm, to, I'm about to present to you today is an Alzheimer's disease conducted in the laboratory of Dr. Erhard Biberich at the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta University. My research concerns the role of small extracellular vesicles called exosomes in Alzheimer's pathology. Alzheimer's disease, in my opinion, is one of the scariest diseases. No one knows who will get it or when it will come. No one is safe from it. Indeed, a person can be smart, intelligent, but in five years' time, that person may not no longer even remember their identity. In fact, more than 5.4 million Americans have Alzheimer's disease. In the years 2000 through 2013, while the leading causes of death, such as stroke, heart disease, and prostate cancer, have decreased, deaths from Alzheimer's disease have increased by 71%. Here on the left part of the slide, you can see the brain of a healthy elderly person compared to that of an Alzheimer's patient. You can see the severe brain atrophy that is a characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. On the right part of the slide, you can see the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease on the cellular level. Inside of neurons, there are depositions of hyperphosphorylated tau protein that form neurofibrillary tangles, while in the extracellular space, insoluble beta amyloid peptides aggregate to form amyloid plaques. These plaques are neurotoxic, and their accumulation is agreed to be the primary trigger of Alzheimer's pathology. However, nobody quite knows why the initial seeding of plaque begins. And knowing how plaques are seeded from the beginning will allow us uh, to start developing more targeted therapies in order to intervene with the progression of the disease in its earliest stage. Recently, the field of exosomes has entered the Alzheimer's research stage because they have been shown to help aggregate amyloid plaques. However, I repeat, this mechanism is unknown and is what I attempt to investigate. Now I will introduce the biogenesis of exosomes in more detail. Exosomes are tiny uh, vesicles secreted by all cells. They're about 40 to 150 nanometers in diameter, and they function to cell-to-cell -cell communication. They, can, they transport a variety of lipids and proteins, RNAs, and it is the exchange of these molecules how, is how they um, participate in cell communication. Exosomes are uh, implicated in a variety of bodily functions, such as immunity, and actually have been shown to transport tumor antigens. S exosomes are enriched with the sphingolipid ceramide. Ceramide, um, causes apoptosis or cell death through a variety of pathways in the body. And also, what's important with ceramide and exosomes is that ceramide regulates exosomal budding and secretion. Here, exosomes uh, are formed in, uh, by um, inver invagination of the multivesicular body. And in this process of invagination, exosomes can acquire the materials that they will transport. So in my case, I'm very interested in ceramide and its synthesizer protein, prostate apoptosis response 4, PAR4. So PAR4, when delivered with ceramide into cells, causes rapid cell death. This uh, schematic also depicts two um, forms, two pathways for ceramide synthesis, de novo synthesis in the endoplasmic reticulum and through the sphingomyelin cycle, where the enzyme neutral sphingomyelinase catalyzes the hydrolysis of sphingomyelins into ceramide. The functioning of this enzyme is essential for secretion of ceramide-enriched exosomes. Also, in Alzheimer's disease, my mentor's laboratory has shown that A-beta secreted from neurons activates neutral sphingomyelinase in astrocytes to secrete exosomes that are enriched with ceramide up to 14 times the regular amount and containing PAR4. These exosomes can then go on and kill other astrocytes. It, since uh, neutral sphingomyelinase is essential in exosomal secretion, we can be investigated as a potential drug target to stop Alzheimer's progression. I hypothesize that ceramide in exosomes will form a direct link with A-beta, thus elucidating the mechanism of plaque formation. 
I further hypothesize that exosomes will exacerbate the toxicity of A-beta and will kill more neurons than merely oligomeric A-beta alone because exosomes uh, will deliver a deadly cargo of ceramide and PAR4. To test my first hypothesis that um, a beta, uh, sorry, that ceramide interacts directly with A beta, I conducted proximity ligation assay. Proximity ligation assay is a tool used to detect close endogenous protein interactions. My mentor's laboratory uses a modified novel form of proximity ligation assay to detect protein lipid interactions by the development of a primary antibody against ceramide. So this schematic on the left shows how proximity ligation assay works. Two specified molecules of interest, in my case, uh, A-beta, the protein, and ceramide, the lipid, have primary antibodies against them uh, and PLA probes. These are basically secondary antibodies that are conjugated with an oligonucleotide strand. So if these two molecules of interest are in close proximity, the oligonucleotide strands will ligate and form circular DNA. Then uh, polymerases and oligonucleotides added to solution uh, will result in rolling circle amplification to amplify uh, this, this circular DNA. And fluorescently labeled oligonucleotides will hybridize to the product. This will give us a clear signal that can be con captured with confocal microscopy, as I show here on the right. This uh, uh, confocal image is of astrocytes treated with amyloid and exosomes. This first panel in green, this is the PLA signal. This is the most important one here. This shows that ceramide interacts directly with A beta. On this uh, next uh, panel in red, these are exosomes stained with the lipophilic dye, vibrant dye I, and astrocyte nuclei are shown blue with DAPI. And the overlay in yellow further emphasizes that it is the ceramide in the exosomal membrane that binds directly to A-beta. This could provide a mechanism for the initial seeding of plaques in Alzheimer's disease. To test my second hypothesis that exosomes will exacerbate the neurotoxicity of A-beta, I used neuronal culture. So here in green, you can see the beta tubulin component of neurons. I stain for beta tubulin because it's a good readout for neuronal damage as beta tubulin is uniformly present throughout neurons soma, dendrite, and axons. You can see pictorially a dramatic decrease in neuronal structures from control to cultures treated with the amyloid and exosomes aggregates. Part B on the right is the quantification of these, uh, of these um, confocal images which reveal uh, that there's significant difference in cultures treated with amyloid and exosome conditions as compared to all other. Here at the bottom is quantification of tunnel assay. So what tunnel does is basically detects apoptotic cells in culture. And so this reveals a 2.6 fold increase in dead neurons in cultures that were treated with amyloid and exosome aggregates. Taken together, these data are the first to show that exosomes that are enriched with ceramide can exacerbate the neurotoxicity of A-beta. Now, since uh, I had mentioned before that astrocyte-derived exosomes contain PAR4 and enrich with ceramide and go on to kill other astrocytes, it was conceivable to test if this was also the case for neurons. So this uh, colorful image is of neurons treated with amyloid and exosome aggregates where amyloid is in red, uh, neuron nuclei blue with DAPI, ceramide in magenta, PAR4 green, and the overlay in white shows that PAR4 and ceramide are present endogenously within the neuron and could be possibly derived from the exosomes. This could explain the, 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 the cell death and the loss of neuronal structures that I showed in the previous slide. So from my current uh, work, my mentor's laboratory, and uh, current literature, I would like to introduce the novel role of astrocyte-derived exosomes in Alzheimer's disease. This green graphic sh postulates how exosomes function in the normal brain. They help clear a beta by delivering it to microglia to be metabolized, not giving it a chance to seed plaques. However, in the Alzheimer's brain, a beta derived from neurons stimulates astrocytes to secrete exosomes that are highly enriched with ceramide. These exosomes, as I have shown, 
help bind a beta f to, uh, de to seed plaques. Then these exosome-rich plaques are very neurotoxic, as I've shown with neuronal cell culture. Ceramide being a central part of this model, can, we can, knowing this, we can investigate it as a potential drug target. Specifically, I mentioned the enzyme neutral sphingomyelinase. There are known inhibitors to this enzyme. And as I said, it is essential for secretion of these exosomes. This gives, uh, sheds light on a novel treatment for Alzheimer's disease that can be investigated in the future. And we'll definitely, uh, we'll attempt to do that. Uh, my mentor and I have uh, authored an abstract on the uh, novel treatments of Alzheimer's disease that we've been working on that has recently been accepted to the American Society for Neurochemistry. I would like to thank my mentors, Dr. Erhard Biberich and doc Dr. Michael Dinkins, for without whom this project will not be possible. And thank you very much for listening. <laughs>